everyone. The religious education teacher was talking to her class of ten-year-olds when she suddenly asked, Now, why do you think the children of Israel made a golden calf? The children were silent until one little boy put up his hand and said, Please, miss, perhaps it was because they didn't have enough gold to make a golden cow. Now, in the Gospel, Jesus tells us to be on our guard against avarice of any kind. It's like worshipping a golden calf or cow of your own. We might be tempted to say that this only applies to super rich people, but does it? They say that people on average in this country have never been better off. Our disposable income has increased sharply in past years. It appears, however, that the more we have, the more we want. Or, as the old Roman adage says, the love of money is like salt water. The more you drink, the thirstier you get. Of course, everyone needs money and quite a bit of it these days to have a half-decent existence. Jesus is not against that, but he is telling us that acquisitions are not the answer to man's deep-seated need for fulfilment. He said, he says to us, lay up treasure in heaven, not on earth. The great playwright Henrik Ibsen said, money can bring you the husk of many things, but not the kernel. It can bring you delicious food, but not appetite. <coughs> Medicine, but not health. Acquaintances, but not friends. Days of joy, but not lasting peace. And Jesus in the Gospel says, A man's life is not made secure by what he owns, even when he has more than enough, more than is needed. The average... The avarice which Jesus condemns is that which puts profit before people or when we gauge a person's value by the size of their bank balance. Avarice is when we exploit people for financial gain. People become expendable. We are rightly shocked when we hear about child bonded labour in some parts of the world involving thousands of youngsters. It's a new form of slavery and the authorities tend to turn a blind eye to it in these countries. Nearer to home, though, we know that there are people, especially from Eastern Europe, forced to work long illegal hours with little or no break time. Avarice has hardened the employer's heart to the basic rights of those who work for him, or should I say slave for him. But even as children, we might be picking up the wrong message where getting rather than giving becomes the all-important thing. There's a little humorous tale about this man's granddaughter who eagerly searched under her pillow one morning after putting her fallen-out tooth there the night before. She burst into tears after discovering that the tooth had not been replaced by a coin during the night. Trying to comfort her, the grandpa said, Darling, you don't still believe in those silly old fairy tales, do you? Maybe not, she replied, but I believe in money. So, whether we're young or old, rich or not so rich, we are all in danger of being infected by the money bug. It can lead to a self-absorbent lifestyle. From what we can read in the Gospel, we pray that our consciences may be stirred by Christ's call to give and not count the cost. In this way, we store up treasure for ourselves in heaven. Now, here are a few questions for you to consider. First, it is said that the love of money is the root of all evil. Could you expand on this? Second, some get rich by dubious means. Some are poor because they have wasted their lives and squandered their money. 
Some are rich because they were born, as we say, with a silver spoon in their mouth. Some are poor because education in the family was not a high priority. Some are poor because of family breakdown. What are your thoughts on these things? Third, Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What do you think our Lord means by these words? Third, when we as a church, or even personally, give to charity, do we sometimes get the feeling that a lot of our money does not reach the very people for whom it was intended? Last, an old saying goes like this. Happiness is not getting what you want, but being content with what you have. How do you feel about this? Interesting questions, aren't they? Now, thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.